Hello, Jen, and welcome to the IHP Success Podcast. How are you? We're so excited to have you on today. I am good. Thank you for having me. I cannot wait to discuss some things with you today. So, Yeah, and this is going to be a really amazing topic and something I think all health coaches could benefit from because people are getting sicker and sicker and it becomes harder to figure out how to work with these very difficult clients. So I'd love for you to tell me a little bit more about yourself, your background, how how you came to IHP. Yeah. So I'm a wife and mom of two boys. My boys are six and nine, Clive and Shepard. And I'm also a mom to three dogs and I'd have a zillion if my husband let me, (laughs) but, um, My professional background, I started off my career in dentistry. I was a dental assistant for a few years and then ended up transitioning into dental education and got really involved not only with educating dental assistants, but also helping to expand the scope of dental assistants in my state. And I was actually a part of a legislative task force to develop licensure and expansion of scope in Nebraska. I was one of the first licensed dental assistants in the state of Nebraska and also worked on a national level with a board of trustees for a dental education foundation um, and was board president for a year as well. So um, I I definitely kind of switched gears over time and how that kind of happened. um, When my son was not even a year old yet, we were living in Nebraska and we got a call from my father-in-law who was re-diagnosed with renal cancer. It had been in remission for seven years and came back and was stage four. And my husband was, of course, devastated. We decided to pick up our little family and move to the state of Washington, where that was really like the first experience that I had personally with with a situation basically where wellness was neglected. And um, I kind of saw that conventional medicine approach to trying to get him better, which it seemed really disconnected. Um, All the puzzle pieces didn't really fit together. And I saw him have like doctor after doctor for all the different symptoms he had. And nobody was really looking at him from like a holistic picture. And that's where I started to kind of like get interested in like health and wellness. But then flash forward to 2019, And my mom um, got a devastating stage four lung cancer diagnosis. And I pretty much dropped everything. My world stopped. I laid in her um, hospital room for a month, you know, trying to get answers and trying to research anything and everything along the way that I could to help her. And ultimately, I felt like I failed her because uh, five weeks after her diagnosis, she passed away. At that moment, it was really a lot of like, um, why did this happen? Could this happen to me? Could this happen to my other family members? What's this all for? Which when the shock and the grief started to lift was when I really started to become obsessed with everything health and wellness. And I started reading every book I could or listening to every, you know, person I could out there on health and wellness, trying to really design my own path forward and the path for my family. And one day I found Dr. Cabral and rest was history. I signed up for IHP one and two that day, continued forward, didn't know how I would end up working with people, but I just knew that was on my heart. And, um, I've been working for equal life for almost a couple of years now and worked with clients a little bit before that as well. So, um, I'm just happy to be doing what I'm doing because I don't want anyone to ever have to feel like that blindsided and feel like they lost a battle like like I had felt. Thank you so much for for sharing that. And, you know, the topic that we're diving into today is really how to help the clients who feel like there is no hope left. And again, maybe have been sick for 10 to 15 years. And while maybe you didn't go through that personally, you went through the same thing they go through for your loved ones. You did the research, you, you know, read every book you could get your hands on to try and find that root cause and the solution to help them get well. And I think that's how a lot of IHPs come to IHP is either their own personal journey or that of a loved one and trying to overcome some of just the worst things. And 
you have that personal story, but you've also helped a lot of people who maybe had a lot of chronic illnesses or they've been sick for most of their lives. And that's what I'd love to kind of dive into next is how different is it when you're working with someone who feels like they've tried everything and they come to you without, again, a lot of hope or they've seen every doctor, they've spent 50000 to to $100,000 on treatment without any success. How do you coach them differently? Yeah, it's always interesting. Um, I think the first step is really listening to their story and really flexing your empathy muscle, which we're all here in this industry for a reason. And we're all probably a little empathic, right? Um, but really allowing their story to be heard, I think is first and foremost, because when they've been through like an assembly line type of like healthcare, they're not used to someone sitting and actually taking in all the information, um, and really trying to put those puzzle pieces together. So I think that's the biggest, um, I guess, takeaway is just really listen to their story and, Sometimes when you're listening to someone's story, your wheels are turning. You're thinking about like, what question am I going to ask next? And what's the plan going to be for this person? And can I really help this person? And you might start to like lose your own confidence. But I think staying engaged and really being mindful in that conversation is my biggest takeaway. Because if you're not really listening to that full story, you may miss something that's really important. I love that. I think that's so important because I, again, I'm one of those very difficult cases. I've been on a wellness journey for 27 years and I went through so many practitioners and I only got an hour with each session and I never had the ability to tell my story. And I knew that there were pieces of it that needed to be heard. And if they didn't hear them, they were going to miss a big piece to the puzzle. So do you work with people in the standard one hour structure or do you tend to have longer appointments? How do you kind of structure those plans? Yeah. So with these more difficult clients, I do think that when you're thinking about your appointment length, there's a lot to really think about. And um, I do tend to expand those appointments and I like to be able to give them as much time as they need to properly tell their story. And sometimes their story is the majority of the conversation. Um, I also (laughs) like to build out time before and after those types of appointments as well, especially if I know ahead of time that this is going to be a more difficult client because it's nice to kind of properly prepare my own mind going into it, but then also having some time to decompress afterward as well. I think it can be really important. Yeah, I think the timing thing is is so key because again, if you only have an hour, how much can you really listen to them and let them express And and that's a lot of the times what they need is they just need to feel heard. They need to feel like someone understands them. And I went through appointment after appointment that I left and I was like, that person's not going to be able to help me. And I would have been one of these challenging cases because I read every book I could get my hands on for pretty much my entire life. And so it's also how do you build that trust to where they believe that you can help them get well? If you don't have that trust, you know, they're not going to be as successful moving forward on new habits or committing to a protocol. So how do you build more of that trust? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think part of it is being willing to share a little bit of your own story and really trying to connect with their story and so that they can see that you understand their story. You may not have gone through the same thing as them or a family member has not gone through the same thing as them but you can connect in a way with their story. For instance, I recently had a client who was going through some hormonal imbalances and I could tell off the call, just right, right from the bat that this was going to be a little bit more of a difficult conversation. And she seemed a little more skeptical. And she had told me she had worked with other practitioners and they just didn't understand her. And so I shared with her that I also dealt with some hormonal Im- imbalances, especially after the stress of lo- losing my mom and I went on quite a journey uh, through that and just kind of sharing some pieces of that. She really connected with that. And she was like, wow. She's like, I am so glad I got on this call today. She's like, honestly, I didn't even want to get on this call. I didn't think you would get me or understand me. And now I'm open and I'm ready to listen. And sometimes one thing that I look for after I kind of like share something or try to develop trust by reiterating their story, um, is I look for this like deep side or this deep breath, I should say, this like 
where they almost like seem like, oh, I can relax into this because she gets me. I love that. I love that so much because it really is, you know, showing them that you're paying attention and that you're listening and that maybe you've been where they are or you've worked with other people who have and you've helped them overcome. And it is, I, I've seen that too, that kind of breath of fresh air where all of a sudden their facial express expressions change and they, they, they look and feel lighter because that weight uh, and the fear of I'm never going to get well just lifted because you gave them that hope and that light at the end of the tunnel. And that, you know, I've had people break down in tears in those same conversations because of, of one piece of my micro story that I shared. So I do think that's really important. And one more thing to know about that too. One thing that I really try to be intentional and tell them is thank you, first of all, for sharing your story with me. That is all such helpful information as we move forward and put these pieces together with the lab testing and your story and your symptoms. I want you to know you're in the right place. You and I are here for a reason and you're going to get better. And just kind of reassuring them that they're on the right path. And sometimes even just saying that, they're like, gosh, I needed to hear that today. I've been really struggling. I really needed to hear that today. Even that little like vote of confidence and someone's here going to be like, it's your journey, but I'm kind of here to be your advocate and, and cheer you on and be a cheerleader for you. That's amazing. And I also feel like the missing puzzle piece thing is such a big part of it because again, they've seen so many people, maybe they've done a lot of testing, they've tried a bunch of diets and supplements and they haven't worked. And oftentimes it's because maybe they haven't found the root cause, their, their personal root cause. And letting them know that they just haven't found it yet. And that that's part of your goal is to help them identify what's holding them back, whether it's mindset, whether it's toxins, whatever it is, is like you're on this journey with them and you're going to be a health detective and help them identify what that mis missing puzzle piece is. Absolutely. So I think that's so important to just give them back again, that hope and that feeling of there, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And Absolutely. So I guess I'm curious from your perspective, you personally, how do you keep yourself from taking on the weight and the stress of all of their pain? Because again, you said we're all empaths. We feel, we really care. We yeah. care about these people. We care about clients. And how do you keep it from negatively impacting you so that you can stay positive? Yeah, that's a really great question. And it was something that I really struggled with, especially when I first started working with clients and especially these harder uh, case clients where they have really tried everything and they're desperate and there's a lot of anxious energy, right? So first of all, um, going into the meeting, I like to have that little bit of time before. And I always just kind of like ask God, the universe, whoever you believe in, just for some support during this meeting and some guidance. And I re kind of tell myself, like, trust your instincts with this client. And then after the, as the meeting is going on, I should say, and I start to kind of pick up on that anxious or desperate energy, I really try to take a deep breath and um, picture kind of this like light entering my body and this like, darkness, which I think of as this like negative, like anxious energy leaving. Sometimes I'll also like picture a bubble around myself. So this energy that's coming toward me is bouncing off my bubble and going the opposite way. Um, that was a little tool that I took um, from some mentors that I had at Equal Life and some of the tools that I learned from Mastery. Um, as well as I like to have some time after the client call as well to decompress. Because if you're seeing client after client after client and you're getting a lot of this same energy, I feel like it compounds throughout the day. And so if I can get even like 30 seconds to walk away from my desk or go outside and take a couple of deep breaths, I will, uh, just so I can get some of that energy out. Um, and then at the end of the day, I always also like to have a little buffer time between when I stop seeing clients and when like my kids come home, because if they come home and I haven't decompressed yet from my day, then I feel like I carry that energy a little bit longer too. So I really do think it's a matter of just like allowing yourself 
some time and some grace to just really release whatever emotions are coming up for you in that moment. I think that's so important and to have those habits in place and prepared because you're going to see a lot of concierge level clients. This is going to be a big part of your job moving forward. And most people aren't, they're not going to have the last hope clients all day, every day. So they will have a little bit more leeway, but it is something you do need to prepare a little bit for because again, there's a lot of emotions happening. You you want to be super present with them, but you also need to protect yourself so that you can show up for them and you can provide your best self and still move on with your day and your life and you know not be constantly thinking about this one client this is one thing we all we all do is that we want to help them so much and we want to give 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 but at the end of the day there's you know we have to remember there's only so much we can do between sessions and there's only so many things we can ask them to move forward on without overwhelming them. You know, there's going to be different types of these clients. There's going to be the ones who will go all out with doing absolutely everything you talk about. And they will take every action and they will cut the worst foods cold turkey. But then there's some people who are going to need a little more handholding, who maybe can only change one habit at a time. And I guess I'm curious, where did you learn how to do this? Did you, you know, was there a program you went through that helped you learn how to have people make habit changes and be more successful with these types of adjustments in their life? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, part of it is diving in and just starting to see clients and developing your own tools. But I did really find um, the IHP Mastery was so incredibly helpful on how to coach clients in general, but specifically some of these harder clients um, that might be a little bit more intimidating or you don't necessarily have the tools yet. So it really helps to kind of develop those tools. I thought it was really helpful as I went through IHP Mastery, you're paired with a partner and you get to role play these different um, situations. And just role playing really helped once I got into some of these client sessions and recognizing, ah, I remember this from mastery. I'm going to try this tool today and see if this works for me. And then over time, I think you just try these different tools out. You see what works for you. It's kind of like, you know, like stress reduction, like what works for one may not work for the other, but trying those out and seeing really what feels comfortable for you. I think um, that was so helpful. So important. Yeah. I actually, I finished mastery last year as well. And I agree. It gave me a lot more tools to approach each appointment and be able to listen. It taught me how to listen better so that I could, you know, repeat things back to people and just make their habit changes more successful and more lasting. That was such a big part of it is like understanding the different types of people and how each one has their own way of approaching something and how to work with all of them and the, the, the back and forth with the partner was really, really helpful. I agree. But you mentioned something a second ago, which I want to touch on, which is being intimidated. And I can, I would, I probably was one of those people who would have intimidated a lot of health coaches because I spent probably 15 years reading every book I can get my hands on trying everything. And when I went into a session, I felt like I already knew everything. And sometimes I would work with this person who wasn't giving me anything new. And it would frustrate me. And I would think it was a waste of my money or it was a waste of my time. And I I probably should have listened more and and had more time to tell them my story because without having my story, I felt like they couldn't help me a lot. So how do you keep yourself from being intimidated and feeling, you know, the imposter syndrome? Because I know that's such a big deal for health coaches. If you haven't gone through your own full journey and then you have these really difficult clients come in, how do you, how do you avoid the intimidation and imposter syndrome? Right. And I think this is something that every health coach probably experiences at some point along their way in the journey is the imposter syndrome. And it's something I continue to struggle with, um, you know, as my roles change and things are new. And I think the biggest thing is, you know, facing that fear, doing it anyways. Um, There's a couple of things that I tell myself going into like sessions or in a moment, if somebody like tries to stump me or they seem to know more about something that they want to talk about that I don't really know about. For instance, 
I had a client um, one time we were talking about uh, the homemade electrolyte drink, sea salt, water, uh, lemon or lime. And I recommended pink Himalayan salts or Celtic sea salts or um, Redmond real salt. And he's like, why are you not recommending black Hawaiian salt? And I was like, well, gosh, I've never heard of black Hawaiian salt. And he's like, it's the best. And he told me all about this. And, you know, in that moment, I was kind of like panicked, like, oh my gosh, should I know about this? And I, I think the thing is, is um, in those moments, just being, having something that you can kind of say, like a tool that you can use um, when you don't know the answer to something. And I was like, gosh, like, first of all, like, thank you for sharing this with me. This sounds like it could be a really good option for my clients. And I'm going to go back and now I'm going to research about black Hawaiian salt. And so there's always something that um, I tell myself before when I'm doing something new is that I trust my ability to figure things out. I may not have all the knowledge. I may not have all of the experience that I need or I feel like I need in this moment, but I will research and I will figure it out. And that's how I've kind of looked at my whole life. And I think that all of us here were, most of us are IHPs, I would assume that are listening to this. We know we can look at Dr. Cabral's podcast or um, look into different health books. We have the knowledge at least to where to go to find the right information. And so just know you don't have to know everything in that moment and that's okay. Your pure presence of being willing to A, work with this client, B, show up for them in such an empathetic way is really going to drive the success of the story more than all the knowledge and kind of having that know-it-all um, mentality, right? Yeah, I love that. And I think that's such an important one because there's so many new tools. There's so many supplements. And every time I work with somebody, it's like, oh, have you heard of this? I'm taking this. Right. Or, you know, and most of the time, yes, but there's always new ones. There's new technologies and you don't have to know everything about every single one. I think that's a really important thing to, <laughs> yeah. to know is you, again, you're powerful and you're so helpful for them just being there and listening to their story. And your empathy and your heart can make a massive difference in their life, even if you don't know everything. And imposter syndrome is such a huge issue. Again, if you haven't gone through these issues yourself, but when you follow the de-stress protocol and you know that everyone needs to empty their rain barrels and, you know, look at imbalances exactly. and focus on finding balance, it does. it almost doesn't matter some of the things, you know, they've done in the past. It's like, what are we going to do now to help you move forward? And so I, I, I love that. And it's, it's such an important one for me even now is because I also work with some of the harder cases just because of my personal history, people are drawn to me who've been sick for a really long time and they're always throwing new things at me. And I'm like, I would love to learn more about that. I'm going to go home and research and <laughs> we can chat about it on our next call. Exactly. And one other thing I want to note too, is making sure that you have a support system in place meaning that have you you need to have other health coaches to kind of like bounce ideas off of or maybe you need to just um you know get some things off your chest and have somebody else listen that gets it i think that's such an important piece for help the health coaching puzzle as well and i'm so grateful for all of the people around me and my support system that have really helped me on my journey to become a better, better health coach as well yeah, and the IHP community, honestly, for me, it was something I didn't know coming into IHP. I didn't know how amazing the community would be and being able to ask questions and pass things by other health coaches and everyone's so willing to share and help. And I think really encouraging coaches to utilize the community. And if you aren't sure how to help somebody, ask your fellow IHPs and health coaches and, you know, don't feel like you have to know everything because expecting being expected to know everything is unrealistic so and as IHPs and integrative health practitioners we you you only need to know 10 to 20 percent more than the person you're helping right you don't exactly. have to know everything or be 10 times where that you just need to be 10 to 20 percent more and willing to listen and that's why I'm so grateful for you for coming on the show today it's been so insightful and there's so many great takeaways and is there anything else you'd like to share 
So I just have a question for you, Kate. I heard that you have a new role in IHP, and I would love to hear more about that. Oh, well, yes. Um, I am so excited because I am the new director of success and business growth advisor. So I get to put all my time and passion into helping IHPs build their businesses and help and transform more people's lives. So I get to teach them how to build websites, social media, how to create a success mindset also, because so much of being a successful entrepreneur is about mindset and removing limiting beliefs, which a lot of that actually ties in with health coaching, because we're also trying to teach our health coaching clients how to remove those limiting beliefs and how to create a mindset that's conducive to healing. So I'm going to be doing the same thing to support health coaches. So I'm really excited to be able to connect with with lots of people on the podcast and be putting together programs that are all going to support IHPs. So That's it's going to be awesome. really fun and I'm, I'm super excited. <laughs> yeah. Every coach needs a coach. So exactly. Exactly. Be great. Yes. Well, well thank, thank you again you. so much for coming on. There were so many great takeaways here. I think, you know, just understanding that so much of helping the difficult cases is about listening and it's about creating that relationship of trust and making sure they know that you're there for them and that you want to help them find the missing puzzle pieces, but also that you're keeping yourself healthy because you are absolutely the most valuable asset you've got. And if you're not healthy mentally and physically, and you're not creating a system for yourself to deal with these harder cases, you know, you're not going to be as successful in helping them. So Thank you so much again for coming on. This has been such a treat. I look forward to connecting with you more in the community. And for everyone listening, thank you so much for tuning in. You can subscribe on YouTube or on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. And if you'd like to learn more about Mastery or any of our other programs, you can find some links in our show notes. Thank you so much. Thanks, I will Kate. talk to you soon.